Well, hey there, everybody. It's Lori McLean back with another episode of RA Raw. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this channel. I release videos every Thursday regarding rheumatoid arthritis. I was diagnosed at the age of two and I am now in my 40th year with the disease. My intent for this channel is to inspire and to educate others with rheumatoid arthritis. So this week's episode is the first in a two-part series about the myths that surround rheumatoid arthritis. So myth number one, rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis are the same thing. That is not true. They are two completely separate uh, conditions. Rheumatoid arthritis is when your body's own immune system attacks its tissues. Osteoarthritis is the breakdown of the cartilage in a joint. Often this will occur after years of wear and tear. It will occur after injury and is more prevalent in those of an older age group. So myth number two, very similar, and that is that rheumatoid arthritis is just a joint condition. No, it is not. It can affect other parts of your body as well, not just your joints. I was diagnosed at eight years old with a condition called iritis. Now that is when rheumatoid arthritis moves into the eyes. It can affect your heart, it can affect your lungs. It has been shown to have an effect on the bowel. And many of us also experience brain fog, both from the medications and from the disease itself. So no, it is not just a disease that affects your joints. The next myth is that give it time and RA will get better. <laughs> I, no, no it will not. RA does not just get better. It is a disease and it will not just go away. It needs to be treated. I have many times where I wake up in the morning, be stiff and sore and feel really yuck. And then by about noon, one o'clock would feel great. By seven or eight o'clock in the evening, I would be exhausted, sore, worn out from the day. There really is an ebb and flow to this disease. That makes it very difficult for many folks to understand. Next myth is you should avoid medication for as long as possible because of the side effects. We've all seen the commercials for rheumatoid arthritis medications where somebody is out riding a bike, somebody's out jogging, somebody's out doing the most amazing things and living spectacularly. But then at the end of the commercial, they start naming all these horrific side effects. Now folks, yes, sometimes those side effects can occur, but not always. I have been on a drug called methotrexate for the last 35 years. Now, if you see the data surrounding methotrexate, it's really scary. It's, you know, things like it can cause cancer. It can cause this, it can cause that. For myself, I had to make that choice and my parents had to make that choice when I was younger. And that was, do we put her on medication that may cause something or do we leave her off medication, have her live in agony? This is something that I can't stress enough. If left uncontrolled, rheumatoid arthritis will cause long-term permanent joint damage, long-term permanent damage to your organs. Folks, it's inflammation and it's uncontrolled inflammation. You need to get that inflammation down. For me, what I choose is to alter my lifestyle so that my medications do not have to increase. I'm comfortable with where they're at right now. You deal with the fire that is right in front of you. You don't know if the measures that you take to put out this fire will cause another one. They may, but they may not. You don't know that. So deal with what's right in front of you at this moment. That's my advice. The next myth is something that I've actually been asked a few times. And the reason I've been asked it is because, as I said, I've been in remission for five years. What a lot of people believe is if your symptoms get better, you can completely go off your medication. That's not true. The reason that your disease is not active right now, or the reason that you're feeling as good as you are, is because of the medications. The next myth is that people with rheumatoid arthritis need to follow a special diet. No, that's not true. I have altered my diet to exclude things like gluten, sugar, processed foods. Um, you'll see a few different diets. If you search online, there's things like the autoimmune paleo diet. A lot of people have had success living a vegan lifestyle or a vegetarian, uh, are following a vegetarian diet. 
for myself, as I say, I've kind of taken bits and pieces from many of those different uh, diets and have found that that has been the best for me. What I suggest people do rather than following a specific diet is finding out what is best for themselves. So start off with an elimination diet and trim that food way back. And then bit by bit, start to reintroduce things like sugar, gluten, dairy, um, the known triggers of inflammation. Start bringing those back in and see what things cause you to have increased inflammation. So that's it. That's the first part of this two-part series regarding the myths surrounding rheumatoid arthritis. Take care. Have a fantastic week. And I will see you all next Thursday. Bye for now. (laughs) 